Scandinavia. Part 1. Table of Contents. Scandinavia. Part 1. All about Scandinavia and the countries of Scandinavia. Denmark. Sweden. Norway. And Finland. Dr. Sidney Sokloff. Dr. Sydney 22 at gmail.com 2023 Narration by Dr. Sydney Sokloff Zoe Phonemes and Nathan Coltov For a complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to tiny.one slash yt navigator Scandinavia These are the flags of the four Nordic countries. All Nordic countries, including the Faroe and Olan Islands, have a similar flag design, all based on the Danabrog, the Danish flag. Here are the flags of the three Scandinavian countries. Note the similarity of these flags. They all display a cross with the intersection left of the center, called the Scandinavian Cross. This is the Danabrog, the Danish flag. What is Scandinavia? Geographically and geologically, Scandinavia only includes Sweden and Norway. Fenniscandia and Fenniscandinavia are sometimes used for a vast region that includes Finland. Strictly speaking, however, political and cultural Scandinavia only includes Sweden, Norway and Denmark. This extended region of Fenniscandia or Fenno-Scandinavia is similar to the concept of the Nordic countries that the Scandinavians prefer. We will include in the term Scandinavian the countries of Finland, Denmark as well as Iceland, even though they are geographically not in the Scandinavian peninsula. In particular, Reykjavik, Iceland, is 1,0850 miles or 1750 kilometers from Oslo in Norway. The usage and meaning of the term Scandinavia are somewhat ambiguous. Finland and Iceland are sometimes counted as parts of Scandinavia in a German mindset. Norway, Sweden and Finland are usually included. But Denmark is not. In the British mindset, Norway, Sweden and Denmark are usually included, often with the addition of Iceland, Finland and sometimes even Greenland. These alternative meanings are considered incorrect in Scandinavia, and occasionally some people may take offense by such usage in English. The Nordic countries or Norden, meaning North, is used unambiguously for the Scandinavian kingdoms of Norway, Sweden, Denmark and the republics of Finland and Iceland. The name Scandinavia comes from a region in southern Sweden called Skin, or Scania. This is a more detailed look at the region of Skåne or Scania in southern Sweden. The modern Scandinavian cooperation after World War I also came to include independent Finland and, since 1944, the newly independent Iceland. Scandinavian as a political term came to be replaced by the term Nordic countries, and eventually, in 1952, by the Nordic Council Institution. Although remote geographically from the rest of Scandinavia, Iceland is, in a sense, the most Scandinavian country of all in terms of culture, language, and ethnicity, settled of a 1,000 years ago by the Vikings. The remoteness of Iceland has contributed to the preservation of the ancient Norse culture. This map shows the Scandinavian countries of Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and Finland.
The Scandinavian people have many things in common, especially language, history, ethnicity, and religion. However, there are significant differences in their psychology. The Danes bear a similarity to the Dutch. Although Hans Christian Andersen, the writer of children's stories and the philosopher Søren Kierkegaard are very different from each other, they are both typically Danish. Except for the Copenhagen area, Denmark is still an open countryside and the average Dane retains some rural outlook. The Dane is given more toward philosophizing the reflection than the Swede. The Swedes attach more importance to a quiet, settled middle-class life. Although they are thoroughly cosmopolitan, they have a logical and meta-of-fact approach, a tranquil and natural way of life and a reserved disposition. The Norwegians have turned toward the sea since time immemorial. They tend to be more adventurous by nature. This is exemplified by the Arctic explorers Nansen and Amundsen. The Finns are firmly attached to the landscape and the lakes and forests of their country. Their character has been formed by the arduous struggle for existence, which calls for the exertion of both mind and body. They are modest and hospitable. Their mystical side is exemplified by the music of Jan Sibabelius. Here is a comparison of the areas of the Scandinavian countries in square kilometers. We see that Finland, Norway and Sweden are all about the same size but that Denmark is very much smaller. Finland is just a little bit larger than Norway in area and somewhat smaller than Sweden. Now the Netherlands and the United Kingdom are also included for comparison purposes. The total area of the Nordic countries, Denmark, Sweden, Norway and Finland is about one and one half the size of Texas or two thirds the size of Alaska. Denmark, Norway, and Finland have comparable populations of around 5 million, and Sweden is up at around 9 million. Norway, with a population of only 4.5 million, has the smallest population of all of the Scandinavian countries. The total population of the Nordic countries, Denmark, Sweden, Norway and Finland, is 24 million. That is just slightly more than the U.S. state of Texas, with a population of 21 million. Here are the Netherlands. The U.K. and the U.S. have been included for comparison. Sweden, along with Norway and Finland has a small population density, especially when compared with Denmark, which is by far the most densely populated of the Scandinavian countries. Here is a comparison of the areas of the Scandinavian countries in square kilometers. We see that Finland, Norway and Sweden are all about the same size but that Denmark is very much smaller. Finland is just a little bit larger than Norway in area and somewhat smaller than Sweden. Now, the Netherlands and the United Kingdom are also included for purposes of comparison. There is an oath a comparison of the population density of several countries. We see that Norway, Sweden, and Finland are very sparsely populated as compared to Denmark, the Netherlands and the UK. Sweden, along with Norway and Finland, has a small population density, especially when compared with Denmark, which is by far the most densely populated of the Scandinavian countries. Norway is the most sparsely populated country in Europe with fewer than 40 persons per square mile, 15 persons per square kilometers. 
About three quarters of the population of Norway lives in urban centers. We see that the population density of Norway is about one third that of the United States. Scandinavian languages. Most dialects of Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian are mutually intelligible, and Scandinavians can, with little trouble, understand each other's standard languages as they appear in print and are heard on radio and television. These dialects are all part of the Indo European family of languages. The Indo European languages all stem from a common source back around 3500 BCE. The home of the Indo Europeans is thought to be some in the region of the Dnieper Valley in southern Russia or Ukraine near the Black Sea. As these tribes migrated from this region, the languages diverged over time. The Scandinavian languages are derived from the Germanic language group. The Germanic languages split into the North Germanic, East Germanic, and West Germanic branches. English is derived from the West Germanic branches. The Scandinavian groups of languages is derived from the North Germanic branch. This map shows the language families in Europe. The green area is the area of the Indo-European languages. We see that it covers almost all of Europe. The few exceptions are the Basque language in the Pyrenees in the north of Spain. The fino ugric language. Spoken in Hungary, Estonia, and Finland. And the Turkic language of Turkey. This shows the branches of the Germanic language family again. English is in the West Germanic branch. Modern German is also in the West Germanic branch. English is closely related to Frisian, a dialect spoken in the northern part of the Netherlands, and is closely related to the language of the Netherlands itself. The North Germanic language is split up into the East and West Scandinavian branches. All of the resultant languages are so close as to be mutually intelligible. The East Germanic language or dialect of Gothic is extinct. This again shows the path from the original Indo-European language to the present-day Scandinavian languages. This shows the geographic location of the speakers of the various Germanic languages. This shows in more detail the location of the speakers of the various Germanic languages. This shows in more detail the location of the speakers of the various Germanic languages. Here's an example of numbers from 1 to 10 in the various Scandinavian languages. We see that Norwegian, Danish, Swedish, and Icelandic are all very similar and actually not much different from English. We also note that the numbers in Finnish, which is not in the Indo-European language family, are considerably different and bear little or no resemblance to numbers in the languages. I have added two other Germanic languages to the table, Dutch and German. We see a strong resemblance among all of these Germanic languages. We again know that Finnish is not a Germanic or even an Indo-European language. The history of the Scandinavian countries is complicated. The Nordic countries are loosely united by historical and cultural ties. During the Viking era of about 800 to 1000 CE, the Scandinavian countries shared a common culture language, Old Norse, religion, and Norse mythology. After being Christianized around the year 1000, the process of unification established Denmark, Norway and Sweden as separate kingdoms. At various times in history, the Scandinavian countries were under various unions and joint rulers, 
as this chart shows. The Scandinavian peoples, except for the Finns, have close cultural and historical ties and speak similar languages. As a result, attempts were made at various times to unify these countries. However, differences that did exist in terms of geography, economic life, and outlook made a permanent union difficult. Let us consider each of the five Scandinavian peoples, the Danes, Icelanders, Norwegians, Swedes, and Finns. In the 12th through the 14th centuries, the Danes were in the Kingdom of Denmark, roughly the same area as present-day Denmark. The Danish Vikings also conquered a large part of England and the southern part of Sweden and territory in northern France known as Normandy. The part of England ruled by the Danish king came to be called Danelaw or Danish law. In the 15th century, the Danes and the rest of the Scandinavian peoples we united under one kingdom in the Kalmar Union. The Kalmar Union combined the three crowns of Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, effected at Kalmar, Sweden, by Queen Margaret I in 1397. At that time, Sweden included the present area of Finland. This union also included Pomerania in the coastal region of present-day Germany and Poland. In the 16th through 18th centuries, Denmark, Norway, and Iceland were united under one kingdom. After 1814, Norway was no longer united with Denmark but was united with Sweden. Denmark and Iceland were united under one kingdom. Iceland was settled by Vikings from Norway and was initially independent in the 12th century. In the 13th and 14th centuries, Iceland was under the sovereignty of the King of Norway. In the 15th century, Iceland was united with the other Scandinavian countries in the Kalmar Union. In the 16th through 18th centuries, Iceland was under the sovereignty of the United Kingdom of Denmark-Norway. In the 19th century, Iceland was under the sovereignty of the King of Denmark. After the invasion of Denmark by Germany in 1940, Iceland became nominally independent, and complete independence was achieved at the end of World War II. Norway was independent in the 12th century and established sovereignty of Iceland in the 13th and 14th centuries. During the Viking era of the 9th and 10th centuries, Vikings from Norway exercised rule over the Faroe Islands, the Shetland Islands and large parts of Scotland and Ireland. From the Faroe Islands, the Norwegian Vikings colonized Iceland and established settlements in Greenland and even in North America for a year or two. From 1397 to 1523, Norway and the other Scandinavian countries were united under the Kalmar Union. After the dissolution of the Kalmar Union, Norway and Denmark were a united kingdom from the 16th through the 18th century. Their name the 19th century. Norway was transferred from Denmark to Sweden in exchange for Sweden giving up Finland to Russia. In 1905 Norway became an independent country. In the 12th through 14th centuries, Sweden was an independent country, although large parts of southern Sweden were occupied by Denmark. Sweden also included the area of present-day Finland. The Kalmar Union united Sweden with the other Scandinavian countries in the 15th century. In the 16th through 18th centuries, Sweden was an independent country, although part of southern Sweden was still occupied by Denmark. Sweden still included the area of present-day Finland. Their name the 19th century. 
Sweden acquired Norway from Denmark in exchange for Sweden giving up Finland to Russia in 1809. In 1905 Norway became independent of Sweden. In the 12th through 14th centuries, Finland was part of the Kingdom of Sweden. Finland was included in the Kalmar Union with the other Scandinavian countries in the 15th century. In the 16th through 18th centuries, Finland was again part of the Kingdom of Sweden. Then in the 19th century, Sweden gave Finland to Russia and, in exchange, acquired Norway from Denmark. Finland became a Grand Duchy under Hector Alexander I. Following the Russian Revolution in 1917, Finland, for the first time, emerged as an independent country. Well, I told you that it was complicated. So, this is the history of Scandinavia. We will next have a short video clip on the history of Scandinavia. The Viking Age, from around 800 AD to 1100 AD, was the age in which Scandinavia formed closer connections with the rest of Europe. Christianity took root, and Sweden, Norway, and Denmark emerged as independent kingdoms. The Vikings were both a warrior and farming society. They were also skilled shipbuilders and seafaring explorers who sailed beyond their homeland not only to raid, but also to build settlements in other parts of the world. The Danish Vikings went south and into regions of the northwestern Mediterranean coast. The Swedish Vikings went to Eastern Europe, while the Norwegians sailed to Greenland and North America. On their journeys, the Vikings encountered a wide variety of social systems, including the hunting fishing culture of the Eskimos, the early medieval culture of Central Europe, and the advanced cultures along the Mediterranean coast. Many Vikings never returned to Scandinavia. They either died in battles or settled in countries far away, and their descendants gradually became integrated into the indigenous population. The Vikings had a well-developed alphabet called runes. They would carve these symbols into limestone slabs called runestones to commemorate special events, heroic people, or legendary exploits. Today, some of these stones are over a thousand years old and can still be seen in Scandinavia. There are over 2,000 rune stones in Sweden alone, many in memory of the Vikings who never returned. In 1397, the most powerful ruler in Scandinavia, the Danish queen Margaret, wanted to bring the three kingdoms together in a union. In the Union letter, she states that over these three kingdoms, for the eternity, only one king shall rule. These three kingdoms shall be and will remain united in harmony and unity. This was not to be, however. The Union steadily disintegrated, and in 1523, with Gustav Vasa's accession to the Swedish throne, it was finally dissolved. Rather than the eternal harmony and unity that Queen Margaret had envisioned, there followed a period of frequent wars between the sworn enemies, Sweden and Denmark. Until around 1800, there was a state of war between the two countries for a total of 134 years. In 1814, after the Napoleonic Wars, Denmark, who had sided with the losing General Napoleon, was forced into a union with Sweden that was to last until 1905. The Climate of Scandinavia The great majority of the population of Scandinavia lives in the region between about 55 degrees north latitude and 60 degrees north latitude. Helsinki, Stockholm and Oslo are all at about 60 degrees north latitude.
Copenhagen is at 55 degrees north latitude. This corresponds to a region in northern Canada about 1500 miles north of New York City, about 40 degree north latitude. Miami, Florida is about 1000 miles south of New York City at about 25 degrees north latitude. Scandinavia is way up north. Is it very cold up there? No. Not nearly as much as you might think. Despite Scandinavia's far northern latitude, most of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden is a moderate climate tempered by the warm waters of the North Atlantic Current, which is a continuation of the Gulf Stream. For example, Bergen, on the west coast of Norway, is at a latitude of 61 degrees north, about the same as Anchorage, Alaska. However, Bergen has an average temperature of 35 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.7 degrees Celsius, in January and 61 degrees Fahrenheit, 16.1 degrees Celsius, in July. Only in the most remote inland areas of Scandinavia are the winters very harsh. The Gulf Stream originates in the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea in the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf Stream then flows northwestward along the coast of the United States and further eastward in the Atlantic Ocean. The North Atlantic Drift continues the Gulf Stream and flows northwestward toward Northern Europe and Scandinavia. The warm waters of the Gulf Stream keep the temperatures of the UK and Scandinavia much warmer than would otherwise be the case. This shows temperatures in January in the Northern Hemisphere. We see that, especially in the western coastal regions of Scandinavia, the temperatures are around 20 or 30 degrees warmer than in areas further inland. This shows temperatures in July in the northern hemisphere. We see that, especially in the western coastal regions of Scandinavia, the temperatures are now about the same as regions further inland. Okay. Now give me some real numbers. Again. Consider Bergen. On the west coast of Norway. At a latitude of 61 degrees north which is about the same as that of Anchorage, Alaska. Hail temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Bergen. Together with the yearly average temperature. Hail temperatures in degrees centigrade throughout the year in Bergen and the yearly average temperature. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Oslo, Norway and the yearly average temperature. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Oslo, Norway. Here are temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Oslo, Norway. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Trondheim, Norway, and the yearly average temperature. Hail temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Trondheim, Norway. Here are temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Trondheim, Norway. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Carbenhavn, Denmark. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Kerbenhound, Denmark. Here are temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Kerbenhound, Denmark. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Helsinki, Finland. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Helsinki, Finland. Here are temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Helsinki, Finland. Now we will look at Stockholm, Sweden. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Stockholm. 
Hail temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Stockholm. Now we will look at Reykjavik, Iceland. Here are temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Reykjavik, Iceland. Hail temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Reykjavik, Iceland. Now we will look at St. Petersburg, Russia. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in St. Petersburg, Russia. Here are temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in St. Petersburg, Russia. Now we will look at Gdansk in Poland. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Gdansk, Poland. Here are temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Gdansk, Poland. Now we will look at London in the UK. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in London, England. Hail temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in London. Now we will look at Southampton on the south coast of England. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Southampton on the south coast of England. Here are temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Southampton on the south coast of England. Now we will look at Paris. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Paris, France. Here are temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Paris. Now we will look at ledges in the Azores. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Lages in the Azores. Here are temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Lages in the Azores. Now we will consider New York City. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in New York City. Hail temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in New York City. Now we will consider Miami, Florida. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Miami. Hail temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Miami. The Daring Sea Rovers to whom these unusual achievements were due were commonly known as Vikings. The period of their activity extending from the middle of the 8th century to the beginning of the 11th, is popularly known as the Viking Age. Their attacks upon settlements and ultimate conquest of England led to the Scandinavian influence upon the English language. For over 200 years, from about 800 to 1000, Europe was ravaged and plundered by this fierce group of warriors from the sea. The Vikings not only raided and plundered wide areas of Europe, but they also settled and colonized various places and left a lasting influence. Now we will go back to the Viking era. Between 750 to 1000, the Swedes and other Scandinavians reconfigured European society when the Vikings undertook marauding, trading, and colonizing expeditions. Dependent on fishing and farming, early Norwegians developed a seafaring tradition that would reach its apex in the Viking era. When Norse warriors regularly raided the British Isles, the coasts of Western Europe, and even the interior of Russia. For over 200 years, from about 800 to 1000, Europe was ravaged and plundered by the Vikings. The Vikings not only raided and plundered wide areas of Europe, but they also settled and colonized various places and left a lasting influence. For some centuries the Scandinavians had remained quietly in their northern home. But in the 8th century a change, possibly economic, possibly political, occurred in this area and provoked among them a spirit of unrest and adventurous enterprise. The Vikings were also known as Norsemen or Northmen. 
Their homelands were the Scandinavian countries of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. The Vikings traveled an immense distance from their Scandinavian homeland. To the west they conquered and held for generations large parts of Britain and Ireland. First the Vikings raided England. Then they attacked Ireland and the Shetland, Orkney, and Faroe Islands. Norwegians colonized parts of the British Isles, the Faroe Islands, and Iceland. From there they pushed on to Greenland and the coasts of Labrador and Newfoundland. The Vikings sailed from Scandinavia in three main directions from the 700s to the 1000s. The Danes went west and south and raided Germany, France, England, Spain, and the Mediterranean coast. The Swedes went to Eastern Europe. The Danes conquered large parts of England in the 7th to 9th centuries. The Danes conquered a large part of England, which became known as Dane law or Danish law. Eventually the Vikings ranged as far west as Iceland and Greenland and established colonies there. They even settled briefly in North America. They established colonies in Iceland and Greenland and even for a while in far off North America. To the south they occupied northern France. They raided cities along the coasts of Portugal and Spain. The Danes established a colony in northern France called Normandy. Normandy got its name from the Norse or Northmen. They sailed through the Straits of Gibraltar to Italy, plundered Sicily and the northern shores of Africa and attacked Constantinople, the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. They went over land and down rivers through Russia down to the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea and established settlements such as Kiev in present-day Ukraine. The Vikings went south into Russia as far as Ukraine and the Black Sea. In fact, the name Russia is derived from the name the Vikings we called Rus. The Vikings traveled all over the Mediterranean Sea to Sicily. Then to Italy. And then even as far as Constantinople. What caused the Vikings to leave their Scandinavian homeland and make such long and arduous journeys? There are several possible theories. Overpopulation at home. Conflict between various groups at the home. Desire for plunder. Sense of adventure and desire for heroism. Relative helplessness of their victims. Probably it was some combination of all of these. The Vikings were made up of landowning chieftains and clan heads. Their retainers. Freemen and any energetic young clan members who sought adventure and booty overseas. At home these Scandinavians were independent farmers, but at sea they were raiders and pillagers. The origin of the word Viking is not certain. One theory is that the Vikings burning, plundering, and killing earned them the name Vikinger, meaning pirate in the early Scandinavian languages. For some centuries the Scandinavians had remained quietly in their northern home. But in the 8th century a change, possibly economic, possibly political, occurred in this area and provoked among them a spirit of unrest and adventurous enterprise. During the Viking period, the Scandinavian countries seemed to have possessed a practically inexhaustible surplus of manpower and leaders of ability who could organize groups of warriors into conquering bands. These Viking bands would travel the seas in their long boats and attack cities and towns along the coasts of Europe with hit-and-run raids. The term Viking Age has come to denote those years from about 800 to 1050 when Scandinavians set out on numerous plundering expeditions abroad.
a surplus population, superior ships and weapons, a well-developed military organization, and a spirit of adventure combined to cause this great movement. The Vikings were pagan seafaring warriors. They were also known as Norsemen or Northmen. Their homelands were the Scandinavian countries of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. First the Vikings raided England. Then they attacked Ireland and the Shetland, Orkney, and Faroe Islands. Eventually the Vikings ranged as far west as Iceland and Greenland, and established colonies there. They even settled briefly in North America. The Vikings went south into Russia as far as Ukraine and the Black Sea. In fact, the name Russia is derived from the name the Vikings we called Rus. The Vikings traveled all over the Mediterranean Sea to Sicily. Then to Italy. and then even as far as Constantinople. The Swedes established a kingdom in Russia and founded the cities of Novgorod and Kiev, both of which are major cities today, with Kiev being the capital and largest city of Ukraine. Norwegians colonized parts of the British Isles, the Faroe Islands, and Iceland. From there they pushed on to Greenland and the coasts of Labrador and Newfoundland. The Danes conquered large parts of England in the 7th to 9th centuries. The Danes conquered a large part of England, which became known as Dane law, or Danish law. The Danes established a colony in northern France called Normandy. Normandy got its name from the Norse or Northmen. The Daring Sea Rovers to whom these unusual achievements were due are commonly known as Vikings, and the period of their activity, extending from the middle of the 8th century to the beginning of the 11th, is popularly known as the Viking Age. It was due to their attacks upon, settlements in, and ultimate conquest of England, that led to the Scandinavian influence upon the English language. For over 200 years, from about 800 to 1000, Europe was ravaged and plundered by this fierce group of warriors from the sea. The Vikings not only raided and plundered wide areas of Europe, but they also settled and colonized various places and left a lasting influence. Norsemen were trained from childhood to be strong and self reliant. Running, jumping, and wrestling took the place of reading, writing, and arithmetic. Their first subjects included skating, skiing, snowshoeing, swimming, rowing, and horseback riding. As soon as a child could carry a weapon, he was taught to thrust a sword, to swing a battle axe, and to throw a spear. A part of their success was due to their religion, for the Norsemen's gods were warriors too. Thor the Thunderer made constant war against the ice and snow giants of the north. The chief god, Odin, presided over Valhalla, the warrior's heaven. Death in battle was considered the most honorable death. Only by that death could a Norseman enter Valhalla. So. The Norsemen battled unafraid and joyful, calling upon their gods to help them. The Vikings were masters at shipbuilding. Some of the Viking ships, or long ships, were quite long for that time. They were strongly built of oak, and from 40 to 60 oarsmen sat on the rowers' benches. These dragon ships, as they were often called, usually appeared in a bay at about dawn. As soon as the ships reached the beach, fierce warriors jumped out, shouting battle cries. 
armed with swords and battle axes. They attacked the sleeping villagers. They killed many of them, captured some of the women and young men, and gathered all the loot that their ships could carry. Then they sailed away. The ships were pointed at each end, so that they could go forward or backward without turning around. They had tall curved prows, usually carved in the shapes of dragons. The ships were very maneuverable and had a shallow draft so that they could go up rivers and land on beaches. The Vikings often sailed far up various rivers such as the Thames as far as London and the Seine as far as Paris on their expeditions. Although the Vikings did on occasion sail far out into the ocean, such as to Iceland and Greenland, they preferred to sail close to shore so that they could cook their meals and spend the night on land. Recommended Videos, Scandinavia, Part 2 Recommended Video, Where is Scandinavia? Recommended Video, Introducing Scandinavia Recommended video, 10 best places to visit in Scandinavia. Recommended video, the Nordic countries, animated Scandinavian history. Recommended video, world geography. Scandinavia. Recommended video, YouTube navigation. Table of Contents Scandinavia Part 1 Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my great videos.